Hey everybody, Jimmy and Bill. So Bill, today what we're gonna talk about is the looming recession, or are we already in a recession? Oh boy. <laughs> okay, there's so many articles and everybody's like on YouTube talking about, hey, we're in a recession. And I'm one of those people kind of leaning towards that we're in a recession. Okay. Okay, but here's a couple of articles about people th think that we're heading towards a recession and not a, an easy one, a hard one. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Let's see what this article says and let's talk about it. And you guys comment below too. Tell us if you think we're in a recession or we're heading towards a recession. And if we are heading towards a recession, is it a soft landing? Is it a hard landing? Or how long it's going to last? Right. And so what is the definition of a recession, the classic definition. I think the classic definition, you put me on the spot on the YouTube video, <laughs> but it's, hey. it's, it's three consecutive quarters of negative growth, I believe. It's three okay. consecutive quarters of negative growth. And I could be totally wrong, <laughs> and I could be making a fool of myself on YouTube. But the cool and, thing and, is, we could edit. I'm not going to edit it because then <laughs> everybody will comment, and be like, "You idiot!" <laughs> it's two. It's or two. Whatever. Or, what are you talking about? Right. I'm not an economist, so <laughs> just curious because I don't know. So. All right, but I think that's what it is. All right. In the meantime, do me a favor. You like you guys like this kind of videos? Do, consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Give it a thumbs up and uh, put a like on there. Really appreciate it. Bill, why don't you start us off? All right. The term recession has been thrown around consistently for the last several years. From tracking e economic growth matters to watching U.S. economic rates, keeping the country from entering a recession has been a high priority. Yes, it has. That makes sense. It's been definitely been on the top of the news list. Oh, especially with election year coming up. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. This is especially true for agencies like the Federal Reserve of which the Federal Open Market Committee not only increased the federal fund's interest rate, but has also kept them high in an attempt to slow the post-pandemic economy. Yet prolonged strategies like increased interest rates, which were first hiked in March of 2022, can have an extremely difficult, uh, can be, have, have been extremely difficult for consumers looking to borrow money. While a significant sure. part of why the Fed raised the rates was rooted in avoiding another potential economic recession, the prolonged nature of these increases might have you questioning just how likely it is for the country to face another downturn. Okay, let's talk about this one. Okay. So basically, they increased rates because of inflation. Correct. Cheap money, people buying, supply and demand, simple. Yep. So, you know, we couldn't produce goods fast enough for people buying cars, houses, everything. Right. pretty much everything. Money was almost free, for lack of a better word. Yeah, so inflation went up. So, you know, it, the, the dollar is losing its value. It's still losing right. its value. You know, it's just, it's just stupid. You know, for the same dollar, you know, just three years ago, you could buy so much more than you could do it today. Right. So... So they raised the interest rates, but it, now if they keep interest rates high too long, mm -hmm. then it's going to stifle growth and people are going to start losing their jobs. And then we go into recession because people are now it's like a balancing act The the feds yeah. have to do a balancing act. Do we raise interest rates or do we leave it alone because they have to battle inflation mm -hmm. and they have to battle the economy at the same time and balance it out. But here's the problem. Their goal was, you know, like, what, 2%? 2%, something along those lines, Okay, yeah. and now what we're at, we're at 3.5. I don't believe yeah. the 3.5, but <laughs> whatever. That's right. what they're saying, 3.5. I think that if they cut the rates soon, it's going to be done because they're worried about the economy. Okay? Okay. I think if they do it, tell me if you disagree, mm -hmm. and you guys tell me if you disagree. If they do it in September, I think people are going to say it's political. Okay. All right. So here's a, so strike number two. And number three, I believe them lowering the rates by a quarter percent really means nothing. Yeah. It, a quarter percent. We're not talking. It's, this, a, it's, it's not a time. I mean, it's money. Don't get us wrong. But it's not like it's this massive decrease like you're instantly going to when they drop rates that it's going to go back to three so, percent yeah, again. So like, don't forget they were at zero percent and they went up to like what? Five and a half percent. You know, federal funds rate. You, you really think that a quarter percent is going to do anything? You think you, the next day people are going to be like, oh, look, I get a mortgage again at 4% now. Right. It's, 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 it's not, not going to happen. Yeah. You know, 
So let's continue. For starters, it's important to understand the basics of what exactly a recession is before looking at factors that could potentially signal the United States is heading for one. Okay, this is where the next sentence or two probably is going to say whether I knew what I was talking about at the beginning of this video. <laughs> okay. A re recession is a decline in economic activity that can last for, for anywhere from a few months, such as, such as two months COVID-19 recession of 2020, two years like 2007 to 2009 Great Recession. I didn't know that. Huh, interesting. Okay. Generally speaking, a recession is declared in the wake of a few economic factors. Negative gross domestic product, declining retail sales, long-term contracting of income, manufacturing measures, and rising unemployment. While the recessions are technically a natural part of regular business cycle, their impacts can have lasting effects on the country's economy. It's true. Right now, you know, Believe it or not, a lot of people losing their jobs. Like a, a year or two years ago, I didn't know of anybody losing their jobs. Now I know four or five people that are actually wow. losing their jobs. That's a shame. Well, actually lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. And I know three or four other people that potentially could be losing their jobs. Wow. So it's, you know, talk about the red flags. Yep. So perhaps the most important thing to understand about a recession is that any combination of the factors that mark a recession can also be used to predict one, okay? Increases in unemployment or changes in consumer spending habits, which can lead to a decline in the gross domestic product, can both indicate that to the country is heading for a recession. However, while individual factors can face significant changes, they are not in and of themselves guarantees of a recession. So, all these red flags don't guarantee a recession is going to happen because no. things can always change. Right. How these factors connect to each other is ultimately at the heart of what cause, which could cause a potential recession. For instance, unemployment on its own is not necessarily enough to cause an economic decline. However, a subsequent drop in consumer spending combined with declining retail sales from consumers not having income to spend could easily lead to a domino effect, all from an increase in unemployment rates. True. So basically, what it's basically saying, you lose your job. Yep. You uh, don't go buy that fancy car. Right, you gotta tighten up. You gotta tighten up. And that's what a lot of people are doing now. You tighten up, you're not buying that fancy car. That car salesman is not making his commissions. Right, so it just starts it, to get it's, the it's snowball. A do, it's a domino effect. Yep. Are we just sitting in the hottest part? I think of we the... picked the hottest, like, <laughs> I'm dying right now. <laughs> it's freaking hot. There's like absolutely no breeze, and I think the sun is just baking on us. And there's like, a pool right there, like, man, I should just jump in the pool. <laughs> Jeez. Go for it. <laughs> Other notable factors that can and currently do affect the U.S. economy potential for recessions include inflation and subsequently high interest rates put into place to try to cool it. Interest rates hit a 40-year high at 9.1% in June of 2022. Yep. However, by May 24, they sat at 3.3% according, according to year-over-year -year consumer price index inflation rates from the U.S. Bureau. That's that's what I'm saying is just like this, it's a, it's a balancing act. And, right. And, you know, I think what they should do, and I'm not an economist, but I think they should raise interest rates, rip off the Band-Aid, just rip it off. It, we're going to have a hard crash, and, you know, it's going to hurt some people, including me. It's just going to hurt everybody, but it'll get inflation back down and then start fixing everything. And this balancing act, I think it's just dragging on, and I think it's it's hurting the dragging on. Mm -hmm. Are they going to lower interest rates, or they're not going to lower interest rates? Right. And now you throw the you know the, the election in, into the fray, it becomes even more complicated. Labor statistics, while this is definitely an improvement, other measures like the personal consumption expenditures price index are still above the Federal Reserve's target of two percent. This means it is still too soon to declare inflation a non-issue and also means interest rates will more than likely stay high in the interim. So do you think they're going to cut rates this September, quarter percent? So at the last Fed meeting, Powell made a statement to the effect of holding rates high for too long can also have a detrimental effect. Mm -hmm. So he's not so bullish on we're standing strong and we're going to keep it. So. And, and also, if you look back through history mm -hmm. from the 60s all the way up to the last election, um, 
typically you do see a reduction in rates other than there was a few elections where rates didn't come down. Now, when we're talking reductions in rates, it kind of goes along with my pet peeve of crash. You know, it, it's people have in their head most of the time when you say crash, crash is something large, mm -hmm. big, right? Versus interest rates come down. Do we all want interest rates to come down to a more sure, manageable rate course. like by one or two percent? Of course we do. But if we go back too fast, we're going to be right back in the same position we're in. And then obviously inflation, supply and demand. Right. Everything's going to go back up again. Right. And we're going to have just in the just just let's talk real estate, cars, things like that. It's more affordable to borrow money. Now everybody's going to come out and grab the product. Right. So we still have a limited inventory, even though inventory is increasing. We still have a overall in the grand scheme of things. We still have a lower inventory than we really should be because it's somewhat artificially propped up and we just don't want to get back at we've already done it's already been kind of dragged out i get it where you're saying you know rip the band-aid off but you know the the converse to that is if we rip the band-aid off too soon all that will be for naught so all that pain and suffering that we had it's like you yeah, know but it's like dying a thousand cuts that's that's, right. what, that's what it feels like right now nobody's happy i talk to so many people people right. aren't saying hey yeah things are great the economy's great i'm i'm happy no, nobody's saying that. Right. So I feel like it's a thousand cuts. So hey, if you can do it, just freaking do it, get it over with, put us out of our misery, and then rebuild. That's what I'm saying. I'm just yeah. saying it's just like this dragging on of like, okay, yeah, okay, well, let's wait another month. Okay, let's wait another month. Just let's wait another month. Rip it month. off and do it. <clears throat> yeah. And then also, you know, the government has to stop spending money. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Stop printing money. You know, yeah. that'll, that'll help. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yes, I know it's an election year and all that. But again, we kind of have to be realistic when we're thinking about things, right, with this whole deal. So after the election, no matter who gets into office, it doesn't matter. After the election, it's not like a switch gets thrown and policies change and all the effects. I'll, you know, give, you my I'll give you my prediction of the after the election. If, if Trump wins, things are still going to go to crap. You know, and it's going to be like a year and a half. Things aren't going to be great. Yep. And he's going to blame it on the Biden administration. Mm -hmm. If somebody else wins um, on the Democratic side, they're like, well, it wasn't me. It was them. We have different policies. Right. I won't even say names because I don't know exactly Who who's running. Yet. Right. Right. Okay. I know everybody says, come on, Harris is going to be running. But until they make it official, I'm not going to say that. So we'll beep that part out. <laughs> Whatever. So, so, so read the. I'm not going to get into politics because right. I'll, I'll go on forever. I know. I know. So I know. go with the economy today. Uh, while a lot of different factors can affect the economy and the potential for a recession, the country is currently in a bit of a waiting period while multiple factors play out. Rob Hayworth, senior investment strategy director for the U.S. Bank Wealth Management, told the bank institution that while there are appear to be signs of serious recession risk at the present, a big question remains, explained Howard. Nevertheless, a big question that may drive the market and the timing of the Fed rate cuts is whether consumers can continue spending at a significant pace to keep up with the economy growing, mm. which makes sense. It makes total sense. It really does. Because we keep spending money. Somehow or another, we're finding money to spend, even though Things are tailoring back. Things are, you know, as far as jobs, prices are still continuing to grow, just not at the price, not at the massive increases that they were, maybe leveling out, depending on where you're at. Yeah, I mean, the people on the lower income, I think the middle class is shrinking. And right, we've got to about that. Yeah, I think the poor are again poor, but I think the rich are still spending money. Because you, yeah. you notice the, the houses that are multi-million dollars are, are kind of flying off the shelf. Yeah, they're still, people are still spending money. And, and people who have already had or been in a house for a longer period of time, um, you know, the, the, the interest rates don't affect them as much because they have the capital to roll back into something. Right. You know, so they don't pay the gains on it and they just roll it right back into a new property. And I'm noticing in a lot of house sales right now, the cash buyers, so they're selling something, they're older and, you know, they have a lot of equity in their house. Yep. So they're selling their houses. Some of them move into Florida. And they're buying the houses in cash, so they really don't care what the interest rates are because they're not taking a loan out. Right. They just move the money from one property to the next. Yeah, I'm seeing so, that more and more. Yep. But the people, you know, the the people that are, are affecting this, you know, are getting affected are the people with the five percent down, ten percent down, which right. a little bit of interest rate. I know 
two or three deals, not now, but six months ago, that the deals died because the rates popped up and, right. and knocked them out of the game. Right, because people are on a very thin line when it comes to their budget, their monthly budget. And, you know, we've had talks about this to each their own, and everybody needs to, you know, they know their own budget. Whether it was a personally set budget that bumped them over or if it was just a, hey, you don't qualify. But I do see a lot of deals falling apart because the interest rate went up a little bit and then it disqualified, you know, the buyer. Or they spent some money or something happened where their debt to income ratio was a little unbalanced and it did bump them out. And they lost, you know, they had a withdrawal. So do you, do you think that we're, did you finish the article? Yeah, but while higher interest, here's a little, the last little snippet of Go this. Go for it. While higher, higher interest rates have cooled inflation, there are signs these increased rates are beginning to negatively impact consumer behaviors like we talked about with the Fed. Right. This could lead to some potential recession factors such as, as failing retail sales and even decreased gross domestic product. The, that said, while this situation is still precarious, and certain Fed discussions could still ultimately tip the scales one way or the other, many agree that U.S. economy is facing a soft landing that will more than likely be marked by slow gross domestic product growth, but not signal a full recession. However, with several inflation measures stubbornly staying higher than the Fed's goals, chances are good that interest rates will continue to remain high. This is the this is on top of increases in debt delinquencies and recent increases in unemployment rates. 4.1% as of June, June 2024, 24, yeah. wow, the highest since November of 21, means it's simply too soon to say how they period. So basically, here's my two cents. I don't think it's gonna be a soft landing, I think it's gonna be a hard landing. I think that we don't know all the facts right now because it's election year. I think a lot of things are being kept from us on the economic side, you know, when they say, hey, this is, you know, our, this is the inflation number that mm -hmm. just came out, and then they revise it when nobody's looking, you know, like on a Sunday night, Yeah, you know, they revise it nice and quietly. But from what I need, from what I know, and meeting people, a lot of people are losing jobs. Right. And a lot of people aren't happy, and it doesn't seem like things are getting better. So a lot of people are cutting back. Even McDonald's is having a hard time getting people in their doors. Yeah, everybody is. You start to see, when you start seeing all these ads, mm -hmm. like the perfect example is McDonald's. I'm starting to see ads for the fast food restaurants and things like that to make to make things more affordable, right, for people. So that means people are pulling back completely, right. No more because it's easy. Fast food's fast and simple. So I'm looking at the simple things. People just yeah. can't afford stuff, so they're cutting back. And I think if enough people do that, the big companies, you know, are going to get hurt. And I think that we're going to have a problem with the stock market. I think we're going to have a problem. I think it's going to be a hard landing. I think the end of 2024 and most of 2025 is going to be a really hard time. That's my prediction. What's it's going your? to be. It's it's going to be. I think it's just going to be tough no matter what because we are in such an inflection point and there's so much that we don't know and we're just kind of everything just seems like it's in turmoil right now no matter what it does it, it really does and you know we're divided turmoil i don't i don't i haven't ran into anybody saying hey how are you feeling about things and they say good so yeah tell us what you guys think do you think that we're in a recession are we heading towards a recession if we you think we're heading towards a recession do you think it'll be a soft landing hard landing Whatever you guys think, it's greatly appreciated. In the meantime, that's today's video. If you do me a favor, watch this video right here. It's going to be a really good one. Consider subscribing, like, and share. And it's greatly, greatly appreciated. And we'll catch you on the next one because it's like literally 105 degrees. I'm freaking melting. Yeah, we're going inside. Oh, we're going in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. We'll talk to you later. See you on the next video. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Bye.